What's up guys? We're here in San Diego at the Shred Lights headquarters. We got some special stuff for you guys today. So we want to check it out, do a tour, and they share some great details about the new lights. So let's get into it. Hey, what's going on, Patrick? Welcome. Hey, what's up, man? How's How you doing? Man, man, glad to be here. Excited to be at the headquarters and to meet in person, but then to see what is this new stuff that you guys got going on. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a little small tour and just, just tell us a little bit about the joint, man. Yeah, of course. So yeah, this is our kind of stock room. This is where we got all the shed lights in here. Okay. So this is uh, how we get the lights in, ready to ship out here. Once we're ready to ship them, we'll bring them over here. This is Andrew. Everybody Hello. say what's up to Andrew. <laughs> Hello. This is Andrew. If you have any issues related to your product, this is the guy to be hooking you guys up. Yes, so sir. show my man Andrew some love, y'all. Show him some love. Magnificent. You know what I'm saying? Hello, hello. So when people buy their orders, you know, everybody's like, I got to get my shred lights. Riding se season is about to start. Mm -hmm. Just take us through the process of like, what does it look like for shred lights to box up an order or whatever and, and get it out there to the people? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I say first and foremost, we're trying to get orders out, you know, ASAP. Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty much every every day, come up, print a bunch of orders. And this is, uh, as you described, you know, the whole like fulfillment station. So yeah, kind of just print out all the orders. Uh, I always make sure to write thanks uh, and put a name on there. Uh, I think that kind of just adds a nice touch, you know? I agree. Um, so yeah, and then just kind of fill the orders. Yeah, you want to see me do one? Man, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so we kind of got an interesting one here. Got a couple single packs in here, four in total, and then just gotta throw the mounts in. Um, yeah, I mean, I think people overall, especially when they order online, they just wanna get their stuff fast, um, you know, and have it be filled by a person that cares, so I'm pretty yeah, stoked to do and, that. Yeah, and I think that that's important, especially in the Eastgate arena. I think Amazon has everybody spoiled. Mm -hmm. And when I first got into Eastgate and I would see how long it would take to get a board, <laughs> yeah. it was like, yeah. you might order a board and it might be a month, yeah. it might be two months. Um, one of the things I do appreciate about Sherlights is that when you guys, somebody orders a product, they get it pretty quick. And uh, I think that that's always pretty good. And even the customer service, you'll see a lot of people have a lot of good stuff to say about the company related. That's you know, great to hear. Yeah. Oh, thanks to Andrew. That's great to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all need to show my man Andrew some love. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you said it, you know, I think like, People, it goes a long way, just like caring mm -hmm. about people and you know, getting their stuff and talking to humans. So, yeah, it's the small stuff, it makes a big difference. So, this is really nice. So, we're gonna go ahead and <laughs> walk around a little bit more and see yeah, what else Red Lights has to offer. So, cool. let's see about it. All right, so cool. We just checked out the initial part, Eric. So, where are we headed to next? Next, let's check out the prototyping facility where we design all the shred lights. Uh oh, come through here, getting exclusive. Okay, well, we got we got to check out the custom uh, the custom shred lights board on the way, painted <laughs> by a friend. Okay, nice. Okay, okay, cool. So in here, this is the prototyping facility. This is the co-founder of Shred Lights, Kyle. He's their CTO and lead engineer. Yeah. Why not walk wow. this in the facility? Awesome. So come check this out. Um, basically, okay. my job here at Shred Lights is to make sure that you guys get the you know highest quality product. We design it. Uh, well, I design the product. I design every Shred Light that's out there, which is pretty cool. Okay, nice. <laughs> I like that. And we basically we do all of it right here. So one of the key things we use, we got our 3D printer set up over here. Wow. So. We do all the prototyping, we 3D print stuff out, we do some molding in house to do like some work with rubber materials. It's like we just, you know, we build and we design everything here and that's how we sort of keep, you know, really high quality. I think the cool thing is that I'm I'm really shocked to see the second the secondary person. A lot of people know <laughs> Eric, but this is the yeah. co-founder. So tell me a, a, just a little bit. How did maybe you and Eric meet? Just, just tell me like how that goes because everybody has their own perspective and their, their role within the company. And Eric is kind of like the face. Everybody yep, knows yep. Eric, but we don't know the guy that's behind <laughs> the scenes is, you know, printing on 3D and doing all the crazy yep, stuff behind yep. the scenes. So tell me a little bit about that. For sure. So it's, I mean, like, like you said, that's that's intentional. Like um, Eric, that's, that's his role at the company. Like he's out there. He understands the Eastgate market better than anybody. Um, 
but I do come from a background. I'm a big skateboarder. That's like all I did up through college was skateboarding, nice. you know? And then I got into e-skating later on. Um, and I, you know, I got my boosted mini. That's my board of choice, right? That's boosted, from good work, old like boosted board. Day. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. Um, but that's, and so how Eric and I met was we were, I was working at a SDSU actually, um, helping students. I had my master's in mechanical engineering. I was helping students launch startup companies. Yep. And Eric came through the business incubator where I worked. And we just sort of uh, linked up, started chatting, and- It made sense. And started making prototypes right there. So I've always been the engineer. I've been into 3D printing for like a decade now, you know what I wow. mean? Like, okay. And just like designing stuff, rapid prototyping, rapid product development, and just happened to hit a subject that we were both passionate about, which is skateboarding and also the next mode of transportation, right? Making sure that people can get around without their cars and like, and have fun doing it, right? I like that. I, you said something really key, passionate. Young people, if you watch, whoever's watching <laughs> this video, you wanna do something that you're passionate about because I'm sure Absolutely. it doesn't feel like work when you get up every day. No, it's Because awesome. it's passion, you know, you, you're enjoying what you're doing. So I think this is amazing over here and you guys are seeing the behind the scenes. This is how you get your lights so you can ride at night safely and even in the daytime safely. So, so appreciate it. Oh, go ahead. Well, no, no, I, I want to show you, I want to show ahead, you real quick, just show like kind of what the prototyping okay. sort of looks like, right? So uh -oh. this is like, this is an example of something that comes off of a 3D printer. So this is, um, starts out as a liquid, liquid resin, and then you 3D print it and like, this is like, in layers. Done by a laser, yeah, in layers. So that's what's over here is this mm -hmm. machine. Um, and basically these are just like sort of like the evolution from, this is starting out with the SL200 basic shape right here and moving forward and iterating till we get something that's more like the SL300. This is one of the earliest prototypes that's fully functional, the SL300, it's fully rubber, which is cool. And we can just prototype this all in house. And then now we get a unit right here that's like from the manufacturers. That's just kind of like the development. We got the first circuit boards that we got in over here, which is wow. cool to see. So this wow. comes in and we test these, make sure everything works well. Testing in these bags, I got different lights that I've assembled different ways to make sure that they're really durable. And then just, so that's how we do it. Man, that is amazing. <laughs> that's exciting. I gotta get my son into some 3D printing because oh, that's so gonna be cool. the future. You know, I, I was just looking at different things. They just talk about 3D printing, you know, medical devices and all kind of stuff. So definitely the future. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Awesome, thanks, awesome. Dude, thanks for coming by, man. This yeah. is so fun. I'm glad to I be never here. get to talk to people about what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're sitting down for probably the most unique and interesting component of this video. And Eric, we know about the SL1000s. Let's talk about those for a quick minute. Why the SL1000s? Why did you guys come up with this particular light? Uh, yeah, mainly we wanted to have a super to see where you're riding. Mm -hmm. So with 200 lumens, when you're riding 20 plus miles an hour, it's just not enough light. So we heard from our customers, we saw it in our own experience riding at night. We wanted to come out with a super bright light at a thousand lumens to be able to see where you're going. That being said, not any thousand lumen light would do. We needed to have one that was small and compact enough to actually fit underneath skateboards which is extremely challenging because there's not much space under there, especially with the battery, you know, placed right behind the trucks on most boards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we started with a thousand lumens as our number one design criteria. And after that, we realized that it had to be really small to fit on underneath skateboards. And then th this one actually has a couple of different key features when you compare it to the SL200, one of which you guys talked about the stronger clip mechanism, um, the brightness, of course, but then I, I rarely ever use it but there's some memory settings in here too or something like that, right? Yeah, there is, yeah. So there's safe memory mode, which is gonna make sure that you don't accidentally turn it on into a thousand lumens because you can't. Mm -hmm. But if you you know, wanna be able to turn it back on into a thousand lumens, you can switch that setting. So you gotta have, you know, we like to give people choices, right? Gotcha. Rather than making all the decisions for them, it's nice to give the rider choices because we know people use them for different things. And I love this, the indicator up here for telling mm -hmm. you how much battery you have left on your light. I love that. Yeah. You know, cause sometimes with the SL200, it was a guessing game. You'd be like, did I charge it last time I rode? And you, <laughs> and you, you just don't know where you're standing yeah. and you could be out riding, then it runs out. But what we're really here to talk about, Eric, what is this new light that's coming out, man? You, wh yeah. what is this? What do we got so going on? So we're super on? excited to introduce a new and improved line of lights that's gonna replace the SL200. 
and it is gonna be called the SL300. This is the first package here, and the SLR1. So we wanted to separate the names of the white and red lights to make it more clear because a lot of people you know, were asking about this before. So now the white light is gonna be called the SL300. The red light is gonna be the SLR1. Both of these lights have tons of upgrades that make them better than the SL200 in practically every way. So let's start with the elephant in the room. The number one issue with the SL200s was that they would fall off skateboards. We heard this a lot from customers and we did our best to replace lights whenever customers did lose them but ultimately we knew we had to solve it. Mm -hmm. So with the SL1000, this was the first introduction of the new and improved S-Lock. And the key difference with this one is it has a third point of contact back here. So when you install it on a mount, it's getting contact on the front two points and this third point here, which means that the rubber isn't under any stress. It's purely on the plastic clip. So this really strong plastic clip has to bend in like a U shape for it to come off. And we're happy to say that the SL1000 has not come off on any boards in the last six months. So basically, once we verified that this new S-Lock design was gonna work, and it worked with a heavier light, you know, the SL1000 is 123 grams, whereas the SL200 is only 50 grams, we were confident that S-Lock now is gonna be able to hold, you know, lights on in any environment. So the main motivation to redesign the lights was to improve the S-Lock. So here in my hand is the SL300, and this is the SL200. So right here, right off the bat, you're gonna visibly see that it's a fully clean bottom now, and you're gonna see that third point of contact. So this, again, makes it so it's all plastic touching the mounts, and there's no stress on the rubber. Whereas with the SL200, the back here was just rubber, which allowed it to pop off in some instances. So we're super happy about this much stronger S-Lock. We've already been doing tons of testing, and we have not been able to get one to fall off yet. So. It's really encouraging and we're, we're excited to make sure that lights down everyone's boards. I like that um, because like you were saying, and one of the other things that I really liked is sometimes people will say, hey man, my shred light came off. And I'll say, hey man, contact shred lights because they'll take care of you. And even though someone's lights might come off, you guys, I never heard of you guys saying, oh, we can't help you. You guys are always trying to help the consumer and the customer to, you know, make, make sure that they, they were well taken care of. So absolutely definitely and, like and that. And they help us because every time we replace someone's light, we have a survey and we're collecting data and mm -hmm. the customers are helping us understand what's making the lights fall off. We concluded that it's mainly hub motor boards in, in cities like New York where the <laughs> roads are really bad. And, but, why you should, why you mess with the hub motor board there? <laughs> he said the hub motor boards guy. He's basically saying, get you a belt drive, get you a direct drive. Belt drive helps. All t the pneumatic <laughs> tires are obviously the best because they're more cushioned. Yeah. But no, the customers really help us. So, yeah. you know, we really appreciate everyone working with us to help us learn about where they're falling off the most. And that allows Kyle to, to design a better light, which we've done here. So we're really excited about that. Nice. So that's that's the, the, the first change, yeah, is the, the improved S-Lock. Uh, other than that, the uh, brightness on the white and red lights have been improved by 50%. So now the SL300, just like the name indicates, it's 300 lumens, which is up from 200 lumens on the SL200. And the red light is 50% brighter, so now our SLR1 is 40 lumens. Another change I'm really excited about is the lens. So the lens is expanded to go all the way around the sides. So I can kind of give you a quick demo. When you turn the light on now, so this is the SLR1, so you can see both lights are on here, but from that side view, now you're gonna be able to see the lens from the side. So this is nice for, you know, number one, just increasing your visibility from the sides, but also if you're looking down and you wanna see if your lights are turned on, it's really easy to see. So that's like one of the features I really like. Another kind of fix that we have is the O-rings we're ripping on the SL200. So now we've just removed that entirely. And this lens is actually much more water resistant than the 200. So we're gonna be able to hit an IPX7 waterproof rating on this. So yeah, just overall more robust lens, better visibility. The actual rubber casing is now over molded directly on there. So what that means is the inside plastic housing that holds the circuit board and battery. Before we used to assemble that and then slide it into the rubber. Now we're actually using the manufacturing process called overmolding, where they take the plastic piece and shoot the rubber mold directly onto it. So what that means is now 
there isn't as much freedom for the rubber to move around, so the rubber casings will tear much less, which was another issue we wanted to address. So not only durable, more durable S-lock, but also just more, more rip resistant than before. And I, I like the field of view thing that you were talking about. And we were talking about this a little while ago. Um, some people think that shred lights is just a nighttime riding light. And I've always, even from the moment I got my first shred lights, I ride with my lights on in the daytime. And in daytime, I'll have them flashing the front lights and the rear lights because they're visible in the daytime and I just want to be seen when I'm riding out in the streets and such. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that component of it because I think from a safety perspective, that gets overlooked way too much, but then also the, this field of view, the new field of view also. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, yeah, and I think that is something that's overlooked. And I think, you know, shred lights can help you increase your visibility to drivers any time of day. Mm -hmm. And at night, you know, a lot of lights are gonna be seen because it's dark, but during the day, there's actually specific features that you need in a light to be seen. And that is a focused lens. So we use uh, a far focus lens that we developed, which is a 20 degree beam angle. That's gonna make the light go as far as possible. So during the day, that focused lens is a key design requirement to having the light go as, to be seen from as far away as possible. So when you combine that with a flash setting, uh, we were actually researching and we found that it makes you two and a half times more visible than not having lights on during the day. Mm -hmm. And that's just during the day. So by having flashing lights with a focused lens during the day, you're gonna be able to be seen two and a half times more than mm -hmm. you would, you know, without any lights at all. And I think, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, anytime you go out and ride, you ought to be seen, especially when riding, you know, near cars. So that being said, when you're putting thousands of miles on your board, you need a durable light. You need to invest in good lights that are gonna last for thousands of miles. Sure, you can buy a cheaper light, but if you have to hold it or, you know, it's going to break soon, you know, it's not going to handle the vibration on your board, then the lights are no good. Lights have to be working, you know, to help and, keep you safe. And I can speak from that personally because when I first got into Eastgate about a year and a half, two years ago, these boards can be expensive and you're always trying to find ways to kind of cut costs. But I, I've kind of come to the point of you don't want to cut costs on safety. So it's like the reason why I have my wrist guards or whatever the case may be. But the first thing that I did when I bought my boards and I listened to somebody in a, it was a skate group, I bought a regular flashlight and I used P clamps or C clamps or whatever yeah, yeah. to hold them on the board. And I remember it broke and I ran over the light on my board. And the, because the light was like kind of a hard metal, I almost got thrown off of my board, you know, because the I think it was, I don't, I think it was the back wheel that hit it or whatever the case mm -hmm. would be when it fell off. So I kind of learned my lesson then. And then also my son, we were riding on the, the trail that we ride on all the time and somebody didn't have their lights on and they almost hit him. And you know, he's a, he's smaller than I am on his East gate. So once we got the shred lights, that kind of helped with that. But then I don't know if you've noticed Eric, I'm starting to do a lot more group rides with my son. He actually participates in group rides with the fellas, like with the dudes, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. he's out there with us and I feel way more comfortable when he's riding, he has his SL1000 on his helmet flashing. Then he has his SL200s in the front flashing and his he has the SL200 on the back of his helmet and two on the back of his board. And it just makes him visible from like all angles, which helps with that safety. And even, yeah. you know, me personally, I always rock with mine on my helmet as well because I could look at people if I need them to make sure that they see me. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm driving, I could have it flashing and I could just look and be like, that 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 gives you that peace of mind that yeah they saw me so i like it man absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. The, the daytime running lights are key and you know it, you should always have your lights on you know if you want to be seen at all times always have your lights on and then what's the charging oh usb-c yep like. yep and, and, so yeah next uh if you want to actually shoot your camera so we can show the people kind of close up yeah. here so we also made the uh made the usb uh, charging cap a lot more durable so this is going to stay on a lot stronger and be more rip resistant but as you said now we switched from micro usb on the 200 to usb c on the 300 and r1 so really excited about that because now with the sl1000 you're getting the usb c as well so now you can use the same chargers for all of them with that being said we are going to have a quad usb c cable as well so you can charge four shred lights via usb c soon Another little uh, feature that I'm really happy about is we've added battery indication to the 300 and R1. Mm. So, so when the light's turned on, every time you turn the light off, 
it's gonna give you an indication how much battery you have left. I saw that. So right there is green, which means it's above 75%. Do that again. So when you turn it on, and then every single time you turn it off, it's gonna show you how much battery it has left. So that way you always know how much light you have and if you have enough battery to go out for a ride. And there's gonna be three levels of battery indication. It's zero to 25% is gonna show red, 25 to 75% is gonna be orange, and then above 75% 75% is green. So basically, if you're in the green, you got over 75% battery, you're ready to go for a ride. Mm -hmm. um, the battery life on these is still really great. So even though we increased the brightness to 300 lumens, you're still gonna get three hours of battery life, which is insane. In this compact size, you know, this thing is only three inches by one inch by one inch. Mm -hmm. So other lights this size, you know, there's, there's not really any out there that are 300 lumens, but to have three hours of battery life uh, really helps us stand out. Wow, and I'm pulling the clip way tougher <laughs> yeah yeah if you want to kind of just feel the difference yeah between the... huge difference like you don't have to put any force on this to make the old one flex mm -hmm. this one you got to kind of eat your spinach and then pull it you know what <laughs> <laughs> you got to eat your spinach um, and that being said we have the numbers i mean over 90 percent of people with the 200 didn't lose it so you know we're, we're catering to a small group of our customers that are losing lights. A lot of customers don't actually lose lights. It's a minority of people. Mm -hmm. But that being said, you know we're always striving to make our products as best as we can. And so we're we're fixing this. And you know as loose as this one feels to you, this has been working for a lot of riders. Mm -hmm. So now you can feel that difference. And now this is where you know we're really going to get that reassurance that they're never going to fall off. So like that being there. said, I want to challenge you. I'm going to give you a couple of the very first SL300s. So we're going to Patrick up with two SL300s. All right. And as and of today... I'm going to put them through the test. Exactly. <laughs> as of today, we're a month out from the launch. So we're filming this video on June 24th. You guys won't see this until the SL300 launch is out. So Patrick has one month to test the new S-Clip and see if you can get them to fall off. So you guys don't have to worry about taking a risk. Patrick is going to do that for you for and see if they fall off. <laughs> Now, thank you, Eric, man, for taking a moment to, you know, share these new lights with the people. I think the Eastgate community and just the community overall is going to really enjoy this because we've seen you guys expand from just catering to skateboards to now e-bikes, one wheels, helmet lights, just really kind of expanding the brand. So, man, thank you for allowing me to come through and check out the spot. Of I had course. a great time, man. And if you want to learn more about the lights, give them the website, Eric. Give them your social media as well, Shred Lights. Shredlights.com. You know where to find us on social media, at Shred Lights. That's where we post clips of the community. You can DM us, and we can answer any of your questions. You can email Andrew if you have any issues with your lights. We'll take care of you. And actually, speaking of taking care of you, we're super excited to announce with the SL300, the cherry on top. We're extending the warranty from 90 days to one year. Woo. So now all of our lights <laughs> will come with a one year included warranty. Nice. So when people are asking, hey, why get shred lights? Why not just go the cheap route? Because you're not gonna get that one year warranty. You're not gonna get the grade A customer service that you're gonna get from us, you know, riders that are doing doing the same thing that you guys are. We're, we're out here doing it. That's lit. Well, thank you, man. And as always, I'll see you at the top because the bottom is too crowded. Peace. Fool me once, fool me twice. When you're hiding things, might as well be lies